Great. Can I borrow anyone's test? I don't okay. have to test the test. So in number three, yes. So what was the problem with number three? So we're given f1 of x, which is 2x minus 1 over x squared minus x minus 2. We are given f of 2. I'm sorry, f2 of x, I'm sorry. x cubed plus 27 divided by x squared plus 4. We are given f3, which is x cubed minus 9x divided by x plus 2. And we are given f4 which is x squared plus x minus 6 divided by x minus 2. Okay. So we have a bunch of questions here. But before I even read those questions, I'm going to look at the first one. And I'm going to write 2x minus 1 divided by x minus 2 and x plus 1. No factor goes away. I know immediately that this is type 2, right? I know that this will have x equals 2 and x equals negative 1 vertical asymptotes. And I know that y equals 0 will be a horizontal asymptote. I know that about f1 immediately. Would you agree? OK. What do I know about um, f2? I know that it has no vertical asymptote because x squared plus 4 is never 0. No va. No ha either because it's degree 3 over degree 2, but it will have a slant. No factor goes away, no hole in the graph, nothing. OK, I'm looking at the third f function, f3. This is no type that we talked about. So we basically cannot do this at all. Okay, so the degree of the numerator is 3, and the degree of the denominator is 1. We don't know anything about this. We have no knowledge of this. We have not discussed, not even one example. OK, so now the last one factors into x plus 3, x minus 2, divided by x minus 2. I know that x cannot be 2, but also x equals 2 cannot be a vertical asymptote. So no VA, no AJ, no slant. Actually, this is a linear function with a hole in the graph. So x equals 2. So 2 comma whatever I'll see in a minute will be a hole in the graph. And based on that, I can answer all the questions in the, co in the problem. OK? So now how do I determine this coordinate, the y coordinate? I plug in 2 here. Be careful. This is very important. In order to find the coordinates of the hole, you plug 2 in here, so you get 5. So left and right in the chart, you must write 5. Right, Left and right of 2 in the chart, you mm -hmm. must write 5. Because that's the point. I know you got it, but you have to show it. OK? okay? Yeah. So now, any questions? Um, Chris, anything that you would like to, is the whole thing clear now, or is there any part of the problem that I have to go back to? You want to look at the problem and see part A, B, C, which one you want to, you have any questions on before we move on, or before I answer? I guess we just... Um, which, I just didn't know which one is this, which one is on horizontal. Well, this is nothing. Yeah. The bag is coming. <laughs> you found it? <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Did it scare you? Did it scare you? Don't get me in trouble, which means read read the back of those that candy, and if you think that you are allergic to any of that, any of the ingredients, be careful, okay? Don't get me in trouble.
Just pick one of our No, pick as many as you want. <laughs> Jane? Pick as many as you want. Okay, is this clear? Chris, Is do I have to go to any part of the problem? No, I was just confused. I just didn't know that was like the... Which one? one? One, two, three, four. The third one, I didn't know that was... I thought it was the third type, but I didn't know... This one? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. We have never discussed any of that. So we only discussed three types. Same degree of the same degree, higher degree in the denominator, and one more in the numerator. That's all we discussed. Nothing else. This is, we don't know anything about that. Other than it has a vertical asymptote. That he can, so x equals negative 2 is a vertical asymptote. But other than that, we don't know anything about it. OK, so now let's look at number 5. Can I? Number five. Yes. What is it? I forgot. Number five. What does it say? Oh, that's, it's number one. What is number five? Oh, cosine of sine inverse x. Very good. Important type of problem. So, cosine of sine inverse of x. So, this is what we are asked to find. Where is my starting point? Um, sine inverse of x. Exactly. So, sine, of course, I always start from the inside. What is this? Now I have to think. Is it an angle or a number? It's a number. It's an angle. <laughs> so what is it again? So remember, it remember, sine is applied to angles, returns numbers between negative 1 and 1. Sine inverse is applied to negative 1 to 1 and returns an angle. Good. Once you write that, everything will fall into place. You will know what to do to both sides. Probably. That's all you have to write at first. So what do you do? Find cosine of an angle? I'm not there yet. Oh. I'm looking at this. What should I do to both sides? Sine? Of course. So apply sine to both sides. So then what is the left-hand side? Right. What is the right hand side? Okay. What does this mean? What does this say to us? It says that there is a right triangle with an acute angle alpha, and those sides will be um, x over 1 means x over 1, the opposite of a hypotenuse. So then I know that this is the square of 1 minus x squared, the hypotenuse squared minus the leg squared. Now I'm asked to find cosine alpha. This is alpha, cosine alpha. So then cosine alpha will equal what? Yes, which is? That's it. No, you probably forgot to uh, review this part. Maybe you were not, you know, recently or something. Okay, <coughs> 11. Which one? Number, this number one. Yeah. Eleven. what did it say? Yes, uh, so we have 60 feet and the angle is 80. So um, angle theta equals 80 degrees. And we're asked to find the area? No, the, uh, the, uh, the radius of the circle. The radius, OK. So I'm given that this is um, 70 feet? And equals 60. 60 feet. OK, so then I have 60 equals r times 80 degrees times pi over 180. The formula means nothing if I don't have the angle in radians. So then r equals, um, I can multiply both sides by 180 first, and then divide by pi and 80. So 60 times 180 over 80 times pi. It's just a linear equation. I multiply both sides by 180 first, and then I divide it by pi times 8. So we'll put it in the calculator, and how much did we get? Uh, 135.5, oh, or 42.96.
42.97, and this is in feet. And in number one, all you have to find is the vertex. So the vertex, which is negative v over 2a, comma f of negative v over 2a. So negative b over 2a, can anyone give us negative, uh, can anyone give us b? Make sure it's in descending order. What was the function? Can anyone give us the function? Oh, yeah. So negative 0 0.01 x squared. Oh, you want negative 0 0.01 x squared. Plus 10. Good. <coughs> so b is 10. And 2 times a is negative 0 0.02. Multiply both sides, uh, top and bottom, by 100. You have 1,000 divided by 2 equals 500 feet. Plugging in numbers, I, for plugging in numbers, I can give credit. So if you just try to figure out by plugging in numbers, I can't. It's not a method. Okay. No, if I'm just saying if. So then f of 500 equals negative 0 0.01 <laughs> times 500 squared plus 10 times 500. How much was that? Okay. 2,500 feet. So... 500 feet, so I, I throw a ball up in the air, 500 feet away from where I'm standing, the, the uh, uh, ball will reach its ma maximum height. How much is that maximum height? 2,500 feet. So the horizontal distance till the maximum is 500, but the maximum itself is 2,500. Anything else? Is there anything else you would like to go back to? Please add up your points. Make sure I didn't make a mistake. I apologize if I did. And if you don't have anything else, then I'd like to start chapter 7. Don't get upset if I made a mistake in adding up your points. It's not intentional. I'll correct it at the end. If you have a claim, don't write anything on your test. If you got a higher grade than you deserve, it's okay. You don't have to show it to me. Everything okay? Okay, perfect. So, in Chapter 7, we talk about analytic trigonometry. We're going to go in depth um, with a lot of identities, but I would like to refresh our memory on the first three that I said that were the basic ones and the Pythagorean identities if you want. So can anyone give us the uh, trig identities, three, first three trig identities that we know of? Yes? Yes? Good, and from here we have two more. You can say 1 plus 1 plus. This is tangent, secant. Remember, tangent and secant go together. And this is cotangent and cosecant. So sine squared plus cosine squared. So sine and cosine are together in one equation. Tangent and secant are together in one equation. Cotangent and cosecant are together in one equation. Okay. Now, um, other trig identities that I would like to mention, they are right here on pay in uh, 7.1. We know all of them, right? We know that cosecant is one of a sine. We do know that, right? Okay. Secant is one of a cosine, correct? Uh, cotangent is one of a tangent, or tangent is one of a cotangent. We know tangent is sine of a cosine. Right? We know cotangent is cosine of a sine. We know these. Okay, here are the Pythagorean identities, the three ones that you just told me. Um, you can remember this one as tangent squared plus one. It doesn't matter if you say one plus tangent squared equals secant squared. Uh, 
Now, which functions are odd? Which trig functions are odd? All of them except cosine and the other one that has only cosine in it. Secant. Everything else is odd. So that's why sine of negative alpha will equal what? Negative sine alpha. Cosine negative alpha will equal, if it's even, cosine x. Tangent negative x will equal, right, because it's an odd function. So only cosine of negative x, x will equal cosine x, and only sine of neg co um, secant of negative x will equal secant x. Everything else will have the odd property. Okay. Now, co-function identities. We talked about this. We talked about these. So let's go back and just prove one of them, and then we can continue directly to uh, problems. Okay. So here it is. Let's go back to the unit, to uh, uh, any right triangle. So this is alpha. This is beta. Can anyone tell us how much is alpha plus beta? Of course, 90 degrees or pi over 2, whatever you want to write, it's the same thing. Perfect. And I'm going to denote this by A and this by B and this by C. So now can anyone give us sine alpha? C over A, perfect. Can anyone give us cosine beta? C over A. Right. So as you see, sine alpha is the same with cosine, yes, or pi over 2 minus alpha. These are the co-function identities. Right? Instead of writing beta, I wrote pi over 2 minus alpha. But this is beta, right? If I say beta or pi over 2 minus alpha, I mean the same thing. So cosine pi over 2 minus alpha equals the cofunction alpha. Now, if I want to ask you tangent pi over 2 minus alpha, what will that equal to? It's the co-function. What is the co-function with tangent? Exactly. Uh, what if I ask uh, cosine pi over 2 minus alpha? What would you say? The co-function of cosine is sine. Sine alpha. Uh, what about... Um, Cosecant pi over 2 minus alpha. What is the co function with cosecant? Exactly. So these are the co function identities. Yes, we can look at the, uh, at the triangle and prove one. Okay? Or we can wait till the next section probably in about half an hour, and we'll prove one with a different formula that I'm going to show you. Okay? Now, what I would like to do is simplify trig expressions. Two topics here. Topic number one, simplify trig trigonometric expressions. And number two, which is very important, prove trig identities. These are trig identities. I'm going to let you choose one in a minute. But we can't do this right now till we get to section 7.2. Okay. On page 498, if you have your books, page 498, I would like to simplify the trig um, expressions 13 through 26. 13 through 26, one more time, page 498.
So please choose an expression, a trig expression, that we would like to fully simplify. Which one? Anything from 13 to 26. Any problem you want. So we want to start with 13. Sine x, secant x of a tangent x. Perfect. I can't do anything to sine, but I can do to secant. What is secant? Very good. And now tangent, I already look at the top. I can write tangent as sine of a cosine if I want to. There is no need. You'll see in a moment, but okay, I did it anyway. Can anyone tell us another way of writing the numerator? It's over 1. I have to multiply, right? So sine x over cosine x over sine x over cosine x. What is the answer? That's it. Okay, so let's choose another between 13 and 26. So the simplified form of this trig expression is 1. 14. Okay, 14. So uh, we have cosine to the third. Um, x plus uh, sine squared cosine x. What did we say the two key words in any math class are? Factor. And? Good. So let's see. What can we do? Say it again. Please. And what is left in parentheses? But we already have three identities that we know of. Exactly. So what is the final answer? Exactly. Good. Anything else from 13 to 26 before we move on to proving trig identities? Which one? Yes? 18. Secant x minus cosine x over tangent x, and this is number 18. Perfect. There's nothing I can do to cosine, but I can replace secant by. Very good. And I can replace tangent by. Very good. Now the top needs a least common denominator, which is? Very good. Good. So what do we have at the top? Of the fraction in the numerator. I have to write 1. We can get to trig and forget how to add fractions. Not allowed, right? So I have to write 1. Then I have to write minus. What am I multiplying cosine by? Okay. So how much is cosine times cosine? Very good. 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 So now I copy the fraction from the top. 1 minus cosine squared over cosine x, and flip the denominator, cosine x over sine x. Assuming that those denominators are not 0, then what can I simplify already? OK, 1 and 1. But I also know what 1 minus cosine squared equals to. Exactly. So then I have sine squared x over sine x. Is there anything else I can simplify? One sine goes away. One and here and sine x. So we simplified the expression from 19 and it's simplified to sine x. No one can further simplify sine x. It's done. Is there anything else? Or we move on to proving trig identities. Okay, 
So I'm going to choose uh, now, and you are going to choose from 29 through 90. Allow me to choose the first one, and then you choose the next one. I would like to start with what caught my eye is um, 55. I don't know why. You choose the next, please. So tangent squared theta minus sine squared equals tangent squared times sine squared. Maybe the symmetry or something caught my eye. Okay. When we're asked to prove an identity, this is not a tricky question. Meaning, this is true. The left-hand side equals the right-hand side. There is no trick here. Okay? No one is trying to uh, learn us into any um, situation. The left-hand side will equal the right-hand side, for sure. However, this is the left-hand side, this is the right-hand side, and I have to start somewhere. I either start from the left and show that equals the right, or I start from the right and show that equals the left, or I may have to, in certain situations, I may have to fully simplify both sides and show that the simplified form is the same. So one more time. I can stand on the left, disregard the right completely, and work my way to the left, or I'm sorry, to the, the other side. I can start from the right and work my way through to show that it was the left. Sometimes both sides may be complicated, and I may have to simplify both and show, okay, this simplifies to one, this simplifies to one, they are the same. That's an example. Okay. So which side do you think is more complicated? I would say that the difference is more complicated than the product. So here I have a difference of tangent squared sine squared. Here I have a product. I think that this is more difficult because it's a difference and this is a ratio. So let's see what we get on this side. Maybe I have no idea. Sometimes I can see ahead of time or I can see my third step, but sometimes I can't. In this particular problem, honestly, I don't see my third step. I see my first step in which I will change this into sine squared over cosine squared, but I don't know how I eventually I'm going to get to that yet. So you may not, you may be in my situation uh, when you look at a trig identity. Just do something. Okay? Start from one side or the other and perform the operations that come to your mind and by looking at what we have. Okay? And you will get somewhere. So I'm going to start from the left. And here's how we start. I have to write the left-hand side, LHS, equals. I have to copy the left-hand side. And now what do I have to do? I can't do anything to sine squared, but I am able to change tangent squared into sine squared over cosine squared minus sine squared. And as we know in any math class, or every time you think of anything, or you look at something, you should have in the back of your mind, factor, simplify, factor, simplify, factor, simplify. Mm -hmm. I already see what I need to do in these two terms, because they have a common factor. I will pull it out. What is left in parentheses after I pull out sine squared from both? Yes, that's not enough. Yes, cosine squared minus 1. Excellent. Now, a few minutes ago, we just added or subtracted these two fractions. So I have sine squared. What is the least common denominator? I have to add these two. What is the least common denominator? Add, subtract. It doesn't matter how you want to look at it. Not cosine, but? Yes. Very good. What is the adjustment here? Very good. So then I have 1 minus cosine squared theta. Perfect. Yes? Could you plug in 
I complicate things because if I it's it's not a mistake. But oh, so once you if you want to replace this by secant squared and minus one, then you will change the whole thing into tangent squared. Then is that what you want? No, I was just curious in that way you go about it. You can, but only if you remember that third, the third formula for identity. If you remember this one. Secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared. Yes, then I would have to agree. If that's what you want to do, yes, that's fine. But if you don't remember that, then, then you are going backwards. Because we really want to keep everything in terms of sine and cosine. But if you remember that, which is perfect, so sine squared theta minus 1, if you remember that this is tangent squared, then you're done. Because you have sine squared and you have tangent squared and you're done with the right hand side. But if you don't plan on replacing secant squared minus 1 by tangent squared, then you're going backwards. Oh, okay. But if we just threw in secant right there and be like, oh, that's tangent squared. Yes, yeah. if oh. you remember that, then you're done. Okay. Yes, I agree. So let's continue with this. How much is 1 minus cosine squared? Good. How much is sine squared over cosine squared? Good, so we are done. Sine squared times tangent squared equals the right-hand side. So do not, I repeat, do not start by writing that this equals that. You cannot do that. You have to start from either side and step by step work your way to show it that it equals the other. I've seen it in, in tests and papers and final exam. The student st starts with the left hand side equals the right hand side. Left hand side equals the right hand side. Left hand side. No, you can't do that. You're assuming that it's true. Yes, we know it's true, but we have to show. So you have to start from the left hand side as if the right hand side does not exist. It's not given to you. As if it's not given to you. Or from the other side, from the right hand side if you want, and step by step show how you reach the other side. Good. So please now your turn. Anything you catches your wife or your eye from 27 to 29 through 90. And then I'd like to move on, whatever. How many examples you want to do, we'll do them all and then move on. In that situation we just did to prove it, just left to right for that situation. Yes, so we started with the left hand side and did all the trig algebra manipulations that we needed to and show that is the right hand side. Done. And there are other cases where you have to do both? No. Okay. There are cases in which you start with the left hand side, but you're not really getting the left hand side. So you will put a stop on this. And you'll continue with the right hand side and try to make it as simple as possible. And then you'll say, oh, look, now they're equal. It may be. It may be. So that's a possibility. You may get something like that. Good. Next problem. Anything you'd like to pick, 29 through 90. Seventy-six. Seventy-six. Very good. One plus tangent x over 1 minus tangent x equals cosine x plus sine x divided by cosine x minus sine x. Here's our left hand side. Here's our, the, our right hand side. Now the question is, let's take a look at these two and say, I think that such and such side is more difficult or more complex. I would start with a more complex one. I completely agree, because I may not know what to do to cosine plus sine, right, or cosine minus sine. There are some procedures, but yes, I would definitely start from the left-hand side again. So I will have to write LHS equals 1 plus tangent x over 1 minus tangent x. And what is the obvious thing and the only thing I can do? Never in a sum. I cannot simplify Anything but factors. There are no factors whatsoever here. Uh, put in yes, exactly. That's my only chance. So 1 plus 
sine over cosine, and 1 minus sine over cosine. Okay, what is my next step? And the obvious step, and the only step. Say it again. Not yet. I have to find the least common denominator. I have to perform the operations at the top. I have to perform the operations in the denominator. And when I'm done, I have one fraction at the top and one fraction at the bottom, then yes. Your book also shows the method of multiplying top and bottom by cosine. I'm in agreement with that for this problem, but not when the denominators are different. See, it turns out that the least common denominator here and here are both cosine. And you could say, you could say, okay, what if I multiply the top by cosine and multiply the bottom by cosine, which is okay. But if these two are not the same common, they're not the same they're least common denominator, I don't recommend this method. It's up to you, though. Okay, so what is the least common denominator here? What do I change this into? Because I have to multiply it by cosine, right? Yes. So the top is cosine plus sine. And now the denominator is cosine x. And what will be the numerator in the denominator? Yes. So, I, like in all my classes, I, I'm one of my first targets with all my students is I want my students to say when they get to an answer, and it has no meaning. I want them to say it doesn't make sense. So if I reach that stage with all my classes, I'm happy. Okay? So if you look at something and say, makes no sense. You reach that chapter two. That does it. Okay, so I copy the top. And I flip the denominator. Remember, there are some restrictions here. Denominators have to be non-zero at all times, okay, assuming that that's true. What will I do next? Uh, cancel out. One and one. If you don't write one and one, you may think it's zero, and who knows what comes out of that. So the final simplified form is cosine x plus sine x over cosine x minus sine x, and of course I have to look. This is not cheating. I have, I know I have to see what I'm getting, what I'm going, right? So this is the right-hand side, and I have to stop, and it's done. So I, I am hoping that you are going to find these fun and practice them. Yes, go ahead. Oh, I have a question. You want to pick the oh. next one? Go ahead. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, some of them are. We may get to some of them that have a lot of steps. It is very possible. I think we should choose another, at least one more. Unless you think that we should work on more. OK, I'm ready. OK, let's choose two more, and then we'll move on. We're going to have, in the entire chapter, we're going to deal with identities. We're going to move to the next one. Yes? Uh, yeah, question on the Yes. That equals the right hand side. Yes. You see it up there. Look at the original yeah, problem. Yeah. Change the problem. No, you're looking at a different problem. Oh, yeah. Six, six. Oh, 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 I see. Sorry. No right, problem. So, no problem. Okay, so that's still that's what I'm I think you need you need more cash. <laughs> I didn't have enough to do that. Yeah, I think so. Uh, can we do uh, 70? That yes. Kind of Let's look at 70. Okay, 70. Where are you, 70? I don't see it. It's like oh, it's on the right-hand side. I see it. So it's cosecant squared x minus cotangent squared x, everything divided by secant squared x, they say equals cosine squared x. I know this, but this particular problem will be a silly question to ask you. Where do you want to start? Oh, it makes no sense, right? What can I do to that side? So obviously, I have to start from the left-hand side. So this is cosecant. Oops, 
squared x minus cotangent squared x over secant squared x. Now, I do want to, to remember that these three identities are super important. And if you remember them, and can you at least remind me which two trig functions are in each identity? In the first identity, which two trig functions are together? Sine, sine and cosine. In the second one, it doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter. Very good. So look here. Cosecant squared minus cotangent squared. Co exactly. Cosecant squared minus cotangent squared equals 1. Okay, so this is 1 over secant squared, and this is this is Shane's <laughs> the most, most difficult problem you could come up with. <laughs> right hand side. So it was done in one step. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, one more and move on to 7.2. Actually, I would like you to pick one so you can work on it for a minute on, on your own. So please pick one. Okay, I will pick one. 78. 1 over 1 minus sine x minus 1 over plus sine x equals 2 secant x tangent x. Okay. Now at least tell us which side are you going to start with. Uh, I would like, recom definitely recommend the difference versus the product. The difference and the sum are always more difficult than the product. I shouldn't say always, but in many situations. The difference is more difficult because, especially with fractions, right? And if you want five points on your test, yeah. uh, please choose five problems to do in Maple. Okay. Any more time? Is that a yes or a no? No. No cuts that already.
So the least common denominator, we start from the left, the least common denominator would be? True, but I have to write first 1 minus sine x times 1 plus cosine, plus, plus sine x, correct? Now this one needs 1 plus sine x. What does this one need? Can anyone give us the numerator? Minus 1. Very good. So the positive 1 with negative 1 go away. So there is a 2 sine x. And yes, you multiplied. Normally, we don't multiply the factors in the denominator, but this time I will, right? How much is this when you multiply it? A minus B times A plus B. We have an agreement on this one. 1 minus, it's a difference of squares, sine squared x. But 1 minus sine squared x is cosine squared x. And because I see this, I'm going to separate it like this. 2 times 1 over cosine x times sine x over cosine x. Is this the same? Of course. 2 times 1 times sine is 2 sine. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. But the reason I split it like this is because now I can say what this is, and I can say what this is, and then I have the right-hand side. What does this equal to? What does this equal to? So the answer is 2 secant x tangent x, which equals? So it's done.